So this is the current situation. Um, you all know that uh, you have to, to register the substance if it's present, if it's placed on the market above one ton per year. You have to develop a chemical safety report for substance above 10 ton. As Christina say, was saying, that it is foreseen also to perhaps to extend that obligation to a substance above one ton. And um, for hazardous substances, you have to communicate the DNEL and the PNEC, and normally you have to demonstrate that there is a safe exposure. So therefore, that uh, exposure is below the DNEL for human health and below the PNEC for the environment. Obviously, this, uh, if you think about the combination of effect, there are some limitations, because individual registrants are responsible for the safe use of their own substance. Normally, they don't know uh, the uses from the other registrant, and it's also very difficult sometimes to obtain the information from the user. users. So we, you are not necessarily uh, knowledgeable about how the substance is used by the user, users, which tonnage, and so on. So it's very complex for a single registrant to, to perform um, a proper a chemical safety report, and even more difficult if we have to take into account the uses from over resistant. And then, uh, moving to exposure to other chemicals on top of the one that we are placing on the market, this is very, very complex for resistance. So it's why we believe that there are some limitations in the current system, so we need to, to find a pragmatic solution to be able to, to deal with and to take into account combined exposure at registration stage. So, um, we have more and more evidence that we, there is a, a need to act with this cumulative risk level uh, that exceeds the ratio of one. So again, the idea with the math is to try to achieve a sum of the ratio below one. Uh, we have more evidence for in, from environmental. Uh, we have less evidence for biomonitoring. Uh, it's, it's because most probably it's more complex to obtain information on biomonitoring. There is a lot of uh, ethical question there. Uh, it's not so easy to obtain information from, 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 from human uh, by monitoring sample. But more and more evidence, in particular with the HBM4U uh, program. One of the concepts that um, we decided to use is the concept of additivity. Uh, and this was recommended by EFSA. We know that it's, uh, it's not the perfect one, because uh, normally you have to take into account synergies, antagonism, you have to take into account also that there is different effect, uh, but the concept of additivity does not, does not take into account this mode of action or different effect. So it's really a pragmatic solution. It's also very, uh, it's a kind of a precautionary approach, so it's, it's very conservative, but it's a pragmatic one. So it's a one that we decided to implement uh, when developing the math proposal. So what to do? Um, as I said just before, from a scientific point of view, it could be perfect uh, if we were able to uh, perform a risk assessment for every type of scenario to take into account to which substance we are exposed to, and so on and so on, but we know that it's almost impossible. So we need to, to, to find a pragmatic approach. And uh, so the, the, the idea is to, to, so now we call it its risk management approach, is to allocate uh, uh, additional safety factors that we call mixed use allocation factors when you perform, or when a competent authority perform a specific risk assessment of a substance. Again, the idea is to apply um, the math to the risk characterization ratio, to, for example, to the ratio between PEC and PINEC, and the idea is to have this uh, ratio below one divided by math. So you will see that we want to focus on the substance for which, in the restriction dossier, you conclude that the, um, the ratio, the risk ratio, it's below one divided by math. So it's not anymore below one, so it could be if, if, my, if math is five, so it's below 0 0.2. So this is the substance that you will have to act on. So, what we, which decision we, we took? Uh, we decided to, as an extra factor, to take a value of two. We don't know if it's the correct one. Uh, we don't know if it's conservative enough, but it's the one that we decided to, to select. It's not only based on a decision like that, we also 
obviously took into consideration the outcome of the impact assessment that we did, uh, and then this seems to be the most uh, appropriate one. So this additional fact, this safety factor will be added to the MCR that we've just calculated before. And if we do that, we have a range of math between 3 and 10. So as you saw before, the MCR was between 1, 5, and 5. So if you multiply by 2, the math will, should be between 3 and 10. We discussed internally, and the magic number pop up, and it's 5. So again, um, we recognize the uncertainties of that value, but at least uh, we took a decision to, to apply a math, or to propose to apply a math of five. We propose also to apply the same value for, for math for both human health and the environment, mainly because uh, there is, in our view, similar distribution pattern of RCR for, for both. And there is no significant difference between the MCR calculated for human health and for the environment. So when math will be implemented, uh, what could be the different scenario? So as you know, the chemical safety assessment, it's an iterative process. So there are different options uh, when you do your chemical safety assessment to ensure that you are below a ratio of one. The first one is could be to revise the hazard estimate uh, based on more information on the, um, on, on the tox or ecotox, so to, to increase your DNL and PINEC. So this could be one of the outcome of applying a, a math factor. Um, you can also, uh, if your ratio of, of, uh, is still above what is not acceptable, uh, you can revise the exposure estimate. Uh, by using monitoring data, by using uh, a better uh, exposure estimate. Obviously, you can also reduce the exposure by implementing new risk management measures. So this is what we expect uh, to be the main outcome of the math, allowing to reduce the sum of the, of the risk ratio. And uh, in, some, in some cases, uh, the only outcome will be to, to stop the uses when uh, you won't be able to demonstrate that the substance can be still used safely uh, and placed on the market. So this could be also one of the, of the outcome of apply, applying a math. So in, in practice, uh, as I said before, math is a pragmatic risk management tool. Um, it will reinforce the preventive reach approach, and it maintains the responsibility of two industry to demonstrate adequate control of risk when applying this math for their substance, taking into account risk from other substances. The proposed value is five. It's foreseen to give a derogation when uh, the resistant is able to demonstrate, or the downstream user, is able to demonstrate that it took into consideration cumulative effect in their chemical safety assessment, and this is Many be the case, in particular for worker exposure, because, as you know, it's an obligation under the chemical agent directive. Um, important uh, decision or proposal is that we want, for the, as a first step, we would like to limit the application of math to uh, high production volume chemicals, so the substance resistant above 1,000 ton per year. Uh, this is because it's covering most of the tonnage, but also because, as we said before, we want to focus on the substance that uh, induced the higher risk. It, it is foreseen to have a review clause uh, in REACH uh, to see if, indeed, the value that we are proposing is protective enough or not, if uh, the approach is it's, uh, it's, it's a success or not. So with a review clause that um, could be included in REACH to see if uh, we maintain the value of five or if we change the approach or whatever. So um, this is foreseen in, in, in our proposal. Thanks. Thank you.